From a lesser-known low-budget indie film to a global blockbuster, John Wick has redefined the whole action thriller genre in less than a decade. Now, the fourth installment of the film has made double what the original movie did. That's right, guys. John Wick 4 is out, and it has made some serious waves at the box office. In less than two weeks after its release, it's passed the $250 million mark globally. That's $128 million domestically and $121 million overseas. This means that Chapter 4 is on the course to overtake the Parabellum, which made $171 million in the U.S. and $327 million worldwide. That puts it right on the top to become the highest grossing movie for the franchise. What's more is that the latest installment of John Wick also set a record on its opening weekend. Chad really hooked into this idea of trying to study John Wick through the situations of other characters, and he was really drawn to the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so, enter Donnie Yen as Kane. It grossed $73 million in the States and $137 million worldwide. The film has already overtaken the first two installments of the franchise. The original movie grossed a mere $86 million in comparison, and Chapter 2 closed at $171 million globally. What's really interesting is that John Wick seems to be really popular outside of the U.S. as well, with the U.K., Germany, Mexico, Australia, and Russia becoming some of the biggest territories. That's not all, though. Chapter 4 seems to be doing well with the critics, too. You want to kill him? You want to kill him? I want to kill him. <laughs> what about you, Mr. Vic? I'm going to kill you. Not only is it the longest film in the series, but it's also the best reviewed. According to Rotten Tomatoes, John Wick 4 has a 94% fresh rating, and that's huge. Y'all know how miserly these guys are with their reviews. Even Collider's Ross Benane called it most ambitious, goofy, and thrilling. As always is the case with John Wick movies, the audiences were impressed once again by the film's jaw-dropping action set pieces. The highlight of it all was the extended climactic scenes set in the city of Paris. Donnie Yen's performance as a blind assassin was the cherry on top. And of course, it was the creepy charm of Bill Skarsgård and the rowdy action sequences with Scott Adkins. There were a lot of actors who made the franchise special in the first place, returning to reprise their roles. Ian McShane, Lawrence Fishburne, and the late Lance Reddick. The movie picks up the story flawlessly where Parabellum left it. Keanu Reeves is still on the run from apparently the whole underworld. Chapter 4 opens up in the hometown of Mr. Wick, New York City. From there, the film takes the action to Japan and then Germany before concluding the final showdown in France. Throughout the action-packed movie, John is on the run from the high table, and at the same time, he's trying to exact revenge on them. Wick, alongside Keanu, has come a long way since the first movie came out in 2014. They began with a modest budget, which was only a fraction of the $100 million the fourth movie reportedly cost. But each movie so far has outperformed its predecessor, as director Chad Stalski continues to deliver. I remember that not so long ago, John Wick was only a cult classic with a handful of very loyal fans. Now, it has turned into a global phenomenon, attracting new audiences with the depth of its world building and the patented fluid action sequences. To me, it's no surprise that the fans are finally beginning to appreciate John Wick. I mean, Keanu just put so much effort into it. I mean, this man is insane. Did you guys know that he started training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for this movie? And that's not all. He even learned close quarters combat for the role. But that isn't even all of it. The Matrix superstar also took horse riding lessons and he learned stunt driving too, just so he could do his own action scene. Talk about commitment, guys. No wonder the action sequences are so slick. John glides effortlessly through the screen. And the best part is, it all looks pretty realistic on top of being awesome. Any of you martial arts fans out there will for sure recognize some of the takedowns or submissions that he does when fighting. Tell me, guys, when did you last see someone reload their gun in an action movie? Something as simple as this has been done so beautifully and with so much attention to detail that it's worthy of all the praise. Like, from the surface, John Wick will not seem anything more than a simple action movie, but the way Keanu and Stalski have executed it has redefined the whole genre. Then there's Reeves' effortless charm, too. When you look at him, you might not see eye candy or an insanely shredded guy, but when you hear about him, you'll find out what a true gentleman Keanu is. There's a reason why he's known as Hollywood.
Hollywood's sweetheart. He loves his fans and he adores interacting with them. And the best part is he doesn't try to be a normal guy. He is a normal guy. Like someone you'd see standing in a line or trying to get on the subway. Reeves has been like this forever now. And I'm happy to see that people are now appreciating him for being who he is. Just a normal everyday guy who also happens to be one of the biggest movie stars of our generation. Keanu's discipline, commitment, and stardom definitely have a huge hand in the franchise's success. But that's not the only thing great about the series, because Stalski shot this action flick like an art house film. The gliding cameras and the vibrant colors have brought a new life to the usually gritty scenes in the genre. The cinematographer Dan Lawson told IndieWire that the stuntman turned director wanted to shoot John Wick like a Bertolucci movie. Chapter 4 truly showcases their collaboration together, each piece shot in long takes, doing justice to the elegant choreography, and the color choices just punch up some scenes beautifully. According to Stelsky, the bulk of the resources goes into the pre-production of John Wick movies. They do this because they have to see everything through the camera. They can't just imagine stuff up on a piece of paper and decide that's how things will be. Each scene has to be visualized and perfected. The lighting, the camera work, the action, every minute detail has to stick. No wonder the franchise has been this successful. It looks like everyone is really committed to the project, and they get to bring their own ideas into the mix to see what fits. But sadly, there isn't going to be a fifth movie, at least for some time. You, uh, working again? No, just sorting some stuff out. Oh, well. I'll leave you be then. Good night, John. Good night, Jimmy. Chad told Collider in an interview that he is open to returning for another movie, but he's currently working on another big project, the adaptation of the Ghosts of Tsushima video game. So that means John Wick 5 will have to wait for now. There is some good news, though. Lionsgate recently announced that they're working on the first spin-off of the series. The movie Ballerina will star Anna de Armas, and Keanu will feature a cameo in it, too. You might remember a young girl named Rooney learning ballet when John visits Ruska Roma, seeking passage to Casablanca and Parabellum. That's the character Armas will be picking up now, and the events of the new movie are said to take place sometime between Chapter 3 and John Wick 4, set to be released sometime in 2024. Apart from that, a prequel to John Wick titled The Continental is also in the works. And that's not all, including the spin-off that the ending credits of Chapter 4 teased. So rest easy, guys. Stalski has built a really deep world that will continue to open new doors and introduce new characters, even without Jonathan himself. That's all been about how well the latest John Wick did at the box office.